Hey guys, Tommy here with TFL Classics and today we are talking about the top 10 things that old cars do better than new cars. Top 10 design and engineering functions that old cars have that have for some reason disappeared from new vehicles and things that need to come back. Now admittedly old cars are worse in pretty much every way than new cars. They're slower, they don't handle as well, they are far more dangerous and they'll rust away at the slight hint of moisture. But there are several things that most, keyword most, old cars do better than keyword most new cars. And we're going to start out at the front end. Starting with number 10, this old Saab 900 Turbo has a bumper. And you're probably thinking, well, all new cars have to have a bumper as well. And you'd be correct, but you're also wrong. Take a look at the front end of these new cars. The bumper is incorporated into the front fascia. It's part of the front end design. It's typically painted. It probably has a ton of grills in it, maybe a few LED lights. It's there for legal purposes, but you know, if you hit anything, even at a super slow speed, that repair bill is gonna be astronomical because there's just so much you would have to replace. Well, old cars, especially old American cars from the 70s and 80s, had this large extrusion that stuck out from the front of the vehicle. Not a very elegant design, but highly functional. You can see that here on this Saab. Now, there was actually a mandate throughout the 70s and 80s, largely driven by the insurance companies, but in the United States, your car would have to withstand either a five or 10 mile per hour impact and walk away unscathed. They were intended to bump into things and not damage the rest of the body, which means that even though they are kind of ungainly and a little bit ugly, the second you have a fender bender with an old car like this, you're gonna be happy you have an old school bumper. Now obviously not all bumpers are built the same. This classic Mini, for example, has a really thin, much more delicate bumper, but it's still here for a purpose. If you were to run this into a pole, accidentally both front and rear, you could just pull off this chrome strip, slap a new one on, and you'd be good to go without damaging the hood or the fender or something much more expensive to replace. Number nine on our list is the fuse panel, which seems like a very basic service item that should be extremely easy to get to, but on a lot of modern cars, the fuses aren't accessible hardly at all. Now take a look at the fuse panel on this Saab 900. Not all old cars will have a fuse panel that is this well labeled, but everything is precisely marked as to what it does and everything is easy to get at. So if I unscrew this little cover, if for example, I had an issue with my windshield wiper washer system. I could just undo this little panel, pull this up, and replace that fuse right there, 15 amp, and I'd be back on my way. Now let's take a look at how this compares to a new car. This is a brand new Volkswagen Jetta, and actually this Jetta has a pretty good fuse panel location. It is here underneath the hood. Let's see if it's labeled. Pull open the panel here. It is not, so I can see a number of fuses, but none of which are labeled. Now, this is pretty good as modern cars go because typically you'll find a lot of fuse panels located underneath the dash, either on the driver or the passenger side. And then what this means is that at night, if you have a blown fuse, you're crawling underneath here with your flashlight trying to find the location, referencing the owner's manual. This is not an uncommon thing to do with modern cars. Now, the good news is, is that most modern vehicles are typically not gonna blow fuses. Uh, the electrical systems are much more advanced, but my point is, on the old car, if you do have a small issue like that, it's easy to replace. Now, speaking of small issues like that, we could do a whole nother video talking about serviceability and the complexity of modern cars and how old cars tell you how to replace spark plugs and new cars just tell you to bring them to the dealership. That's a whole nother topic. But let's move on to number eight. We've got a lot more to discuss about just design features. At number eight, tow points. Now, if you look underneath an old car, both front and back, you'll typically find something like this, a little loop or a little hook. And these are extremely useful if you live in a snowy environment like we do here in Colorado. You see, it's not uncommon to see cars stuck in ditches or off the side of the road when we get heavy snow. And recovering a new vehicle, particularly a car, can be quite the challenge because new cars have these nice flush mounted front ends. They don't incorporate hooks or tow points typically. Now, if you get you know, in a bad situation with 
a vehicle like that Jetta, typically what you'll have to do is pop out this little panel in the front, go into the trunk, remove everything out of your trunk, crawl underneath the floor to find this little eyelet, and then you have to scrape the snow off this little panel and screw in the eyelet, and then you have a place to recover your vehicle. Whereas on an old car, you pretty much just have exposed loops on pretty much every old car I've seen. This Mini has two in the front, that Saab has them in the front, it even has them in the back as well. This is hugely handy. Now, of course, the off-road people will tell me, well, that's not a recovery point. Yes, you're right. I mean, I, I don't think this little loop would take the weight of the vehicle over extended periods of long tows, but it is nice if you just need a little tug to get you unstuck. All right, next up we have rub strips. Now these are typically lines of black plastic or lines of black or gray rubber that extend the length of the vehicle. The Saab actually has two of them, one up here and one down here. Now, love them or hate them, they actually do serve a quite useful purpose when you're in parking lots. They're typically positioned so that if a car opens a door into you, they'll hit the plastic rub strip and not leave a nasty dent in your door. That's pretty handy. My Mercedes has a really, really thick one as well, which means that if you open a door too far, you're gonna hit the rub strip and not the paint. So it's a, it's a nice little touch that I wish would come back in a lot of modern cars. Now number six on our list is probably a more obvious one, but it still needs to be said. I'm of course talking about the full-size spare tire. Now typically, pretty much every old car from the 60s, 70s, um, and even into the 80s will have a full-size spare tire, typically located somewhere in the trunk. Now this one on this Mini Cooper looks smaller than the ones I have on there right now, but that's because uh, this has bigger upgraded wheels, but this is in fact the full-size spare tire for the standard wheels on the Mini. And the Saab has one too. Now the full-size spare is a huge deal because even though cars have gotten better, perhaps rows have gotten better, flat tires are still extremely, extremely common, and it's great just being able to have a full-size spare that'll get me down the road at a normal speed. In fact, a lot of new cars don't even ship with a temporary spare tire, just an inflation kit, maybe a patch kit. So this is a thing that needs to come back. And next up on our list is actually related. That is, of course, the tires themselves. You know, so many modern cars have such low profile tires and such large wheels. Old cars typically have a much taller sidewall, even performance cars. If you look at like an old Shelby Mustang, really thick sidewall. If you look at the Saab 900 Turbo, really thick sidewall. This is your first line of defense from not only punctures, but also ride comfort. When you drive over pebbles or cracks in the road, uh, this is going to hit them before your suspension, so it kind of is great that you know, you've got such advancements in suspension nowadays, but if you don't have a nice juicy sidewall, so much of that work is, is for nothing when it comes to overall ride comfort. So if this really needs to come back, just make the wheel a little bit smaller, 15 inches, right on the mark, and then give them a nice tall sidewall. Next up on our list is the automatic transmission selector, which has gotten so complicated over the last decade or so. A lot of modern cars have these crazy shifters that return to the middle and then don't tell you what uh, gear they're in based on just looking at the indicator. You have to look at some screen or something. Look at the Saab, it's great. You know, park, reverse, neutral, drive. That's it. I can simply look down, know exactly what gear I'm in. It doesn't take a PhD in electric, uh, electrical engineering to figure out how to use this device. Now, the push button thing is kind of interesting because a lot of new cars have got a push button. That's not actually all that new. Uh, a lot of old American cars, like the Edsels, for example, had push button uh, transmissions as well. I always think they're terrible. Just give me a traditional column shifter or a console shifter that stays in position when you put it in gear. This is a great solution. Next up we come to ground clearance. Ground clearance is another thing that has been shrinking and shrinking over the years, especially in higher performance vehicles. Now this Saab 900 Turbo, you know, wasn't a race car back in the 80s and 90s, but it was still pretty darn sporty and it has huge amounts of ground clearance, both in the front, in the middle, and of course back here in the rear. Now modern day vehicles, especially sports sedans, are just so low to the ground. They scrape over speed bumps, they scrape over curbs. It's just, it's, it's really frustrating driving some of these modern day sedans. Even higher performance cars throughout the 50s and 60s have huge amounts of ground clearance compared to cars of today. Uh, and it's just great not always having to fumble around with imperfections in the road. You just drive over them. 
Number two, a big one in my opinion, a huge safety device, the parking brake or the handbrake or in some cases a foot brake, but basically a mechanical linkage that you activate with a motion that engages the rear brakes. Now, of course, the Mini and the Saab have a hand style. Take a look. You pull up to activate it, you push a button to deactivate it. It's simple, it works every time. I know when it's engaged. This is a big deal, not only for um, you know a manual transmission like this, but I also engage them typically on an automatic just to be safe. These electronic ones, you turn on and off with a button and you have to have your foot on the brake and the door has to be closed. It's just very confusing. That's another thing that gets me about a lot of the electric ones is sometimes I like to open the door when I'm making a tight parking maneuver to see how close I am to the line or to the the curb and then the car thinks that since I'm in drive I forgot to put it in park and it engages a parking brake and freaks out on me just let me do what I want to do I know how to use a lever it works every time and number one on my list of old crotchety things that I think are better than the new stuff the simplicity and ease of use of old cars as demonstrated by this door handle it's made out of metal it has a keyhole and a button to open the door you push said button in and you move your arm in a swinging motion to close the door you do the same thing there are no electrics to fail in here there are no servos to go wrong no actuators to fail for example our Tesla the door broke we couldn't get in because some electronic component failed this will always work okay it might not always work because it's an old British car but if I need to fix it I can take it apart and replace the rod in there that connects the button to the door mechanism. It's simple. It works. I don't have to think about it. Anyway, rant over. This is just a great example of a classic simple thing that doesn't need to change but has changed countless times over the last decade. For whatever reason, I will never understand. The Mach-E is the worst defender of this. It has some kind of button and handle thing that has this, this special rod that punches out in the winter to break the seal if there's ice. I don't care. This. Just do that. Now there are so many things that modern cars do better than these old clunkers. Fuel efficiency, emissions, air conditioning that works, stuff like that. And obviously old cars are severely compromised and they're worse in a lot of ways. But there are certain design elements that I have pointed out that need to make a comeback because they're just, they're just better. Just keep some stuff simple, give them tires, give them sidewalls, you know, the rub strips would be cool, bumpers at work would be cool. These are things that I think need to come back, even if, you know, they do compromise some of that modern style a little bit. Well, as always, this is Tommy with TFL Classic. Thank you so much for watching my rant video. As always, check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in independent and honest reviews.